Hey everyone, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Today I'm here with my son Oliver, and we're going to go through some of the story idea suggestions we've had, and he's going to tell me which one to make. All right, Oliver, so first off, we have a suggestion from Gabriel and Ben, who recently discovered the podcast and apparently can't get enough of it. Uh, They'd like us to do a hot dog and nuggets planet and a cheese moon. What do you think of that one? Uh, it's a funny idea. Next up is a suggestion from Phoenix Moon. Uh, This one is where a spaceship visits a planet filled with all different types of dinosaur ninjas. What do you think of that one? Yeah, that one's cool. You want to do that one first? Yeah. Okay, so so far the dinosaur ninjas are winning it. So uh, I think we'll start off with the dinosaur ninjas one. Um, Another suggestion I had recently in a couple different places was to do a Hanukkah planet one, which is one I'm trying to get written down. I'm a little worried about being offensive as I don't uh, have a lot of lived experience with Hanukkah. I know what it is and everything like that. Um, but me writing a story about it, I don't know. I, uh, I'll give it a shot for later this week if I get a chance, but to the person who wrote in about it, if you can send me an email at dad.bedtimestories at gmail.com with a few ideas about specifically what you'd like to see in it, that would go a long way. Anyways, it's time to get as comfy as you can in your bed, close your eyes, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. Imagine yourself waking up on Spaceship. Good morning, Spaceship says. Uh, good morning, Spaceship. How are you? I am great. Hey, do you like dinosaurs? Spaceship asks. Uh, yeah, dinos- dinosaurs are alright, you respond. And do you like ninjas? Spaceship asks. Uh, yeah, ninjas ninjas are pretty cool, too. Why? You say back. Well, I have recently discovered a planet of dinosaur ninjas. It is an Earth-like planet where dinosaurs were created, evolved, and developed ninjutsu. Spaceship explains. You, you're telling me that there's a planet somewhere where dinosaurs evolved and they created ninjutsu. So there's like a planet, there's a planet of dinosaur ninjas is what you're saying to me right now, Spaceship. Yes, Spaceship responds. The planet is very close. I have taken the liberty of setting a course already. We are arriving now. The Spaceship drops at a super hyperdrive. Directly in front of you, you see a beautiful blue and green planet with nice fluffy white clouds floating over top. It looks a lot like Earth. Uh, Okay, well, let's go check it out. You jump in the pilot seat and take control of the steering wheel. Uh, Spaceship, activate stealth mode. Understood, Spaceship responds. The ship shimmers around you and eventually sort of disappears. You steer the ship down through the atmosphere and below the clouds. You begin flying over top of the dinosaur ninja planet. And as you look down on the planet below, well, you're not surprised at all. Although you're kind of surprised because there's a whole bunch of dinosaur ninjas everywhere. You fly low over top of a city. All of the houses in the city uh, kind of look like they're of a Japanese design. Most of them are beautiful, ornate timber structures. But while there may be some people practicing martial arts in Japan, here on the dinosaur ninja planet, everybody seems to be practicing martial arts. Outside almost every home on the planet are a group of dinosaurs dressed in all black, going through different katas with weapons, using ninja stars, sighs, swords, nunchucks, and all sorts of different kinds of bow staffs. You notice that one group seems to be made entirely of triceratop-like creatures, although they've evolved to stand upright. Another group are almost entirely long-necked creatures of all different shapes and sizes. There seems to be a group of flying dinosaurs as well, 
or at least giant flying reptiles. They seem to be practicing a form of the art where they float down over top of different people and throw ninja stars and shoot bows and arrows. As you get closer to a lake and river, you see a whole bunch of amphibious dinosaurs. If you're not mistaken, it seems that they may have evolved from something very much like a Mosasaurus. Each of them are practicing a special version of ninjutsu that involves swimming in the water and doing some sort of aquatic combat techniques. Their weapons look like modified bow staves with a long hook on the other end. It might be an old fishing weapon or something like that. As you continue exploring above the planet, you come to another group of dinosaurs. But this group has a base deep in the mountains. There's fire surrounding every side of a large castle where all of these dinosaurs seem to be practicing. The castle's surrounded by fire on every side, and this group seems to be meaner than the others. And if you're not mistaken, they seem to be derived from different meat-eating dinosaurs, but primarily Tyrannosaurus rex and Albertosauruses. On top of that, they're clearly practicing a much meaner, much more physical type of ninjutsu. A type designed to overpower your opponent with overwhelming force. You fly the spaceship back to the center of the original town and you find a little clearing to land it in. Still invisible, nobody else can see you around. Spaceship, I'm gonna need a disguise. If I just walk around like normal, well, people will know I'm not from here. Uh, can you scan one of the dinosaurs so I can take on its DNA and turn into a ninja dinosaur myself? You ask? Yes, scanning, now. Spaceship scans all of the different kinds of dinosaurs on the planet by sending a little probe up into the air. DNA acquired. What type of dinosaur would you like to become? Adding profiles to your watch, Spaceship says. You begin flipping through your watch, through all of the different dinosaur ninja profiles that you can change into. You come to the flying type of dinosaur and you decide to start with that. You press the button and slowly you begin to feel like you're melting, like your body parts just don't want to be solid anymore. You think about becoming the flying type of dinosaur ninja and slowly your arms stretch out into huge wings. Your face and nose stretch out and elongate. You grow some sort of tail that you seem to have another sense for, and your sense of smell and sight seem to be heightened. This is really cool. You look down at your hands slash wings and you're amazed at the transformation. You also feel very light on your feet, as if, uh, well, flying-type dinosaurs don't weigh very much at all. Spaceship opens up the back hatch and you walk out of the ship. As you step off the back platform, you have an urge to just jump in the air and glide. So instead of walking down, you do just that. You spread your arms and wings out and you gently float down the platform. You start to flap your wings and you fly higher and higher into the air above the dinosaur ninja planet. You swoop around searching for the area where the flying type dinosaurs were practicing and you eventually find it. A beautiful courtyard surrounded by a huge fence with large trees throughout the entire thing. The flying type dinosaurs practice swooping from tree to tree and aiming with their bows and arrows and ninja stars, doing various different target practices and, and that sort of thing. As you watch them practice, you get a little worried you're not going to be able to fit in. Do you remember how to shoot a bow and arrow or use ninja stars? Spaceship, you say. Uh, 
can you do that thing where you program me to remember how to do martial arts and all stuff like that? You ask. Programming, now. Sending signal to your watch. Suddenly you feel a strange sensation pass through your watch and your entire body. Your body freezes in place and, unfortunately, that causes you to fall directly out of the sky and land in a nice soft bush. As you do, the memories of hundreds of different martial artists passes through your mind. Shooting bows, using staves, throwing ninja stars. In a very short amount of time, all of the memories of all the different ninjutsu weapons pass through your head. When the upload stops, you open your eyes and look up around you. There's a whole bunch of pterodactyl looking creatures staring down at you from above. Are you okay? They ask. Uh, oh, yeah. I just, uh, um, I just fell asleep. Don't worry about me, you say back. All right, says the other person. We haven't seen you here before. Are you from one of the southern temples? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm from the, the southern temple. I was sent here to train with you guys and learn how to do your sorts of martial arts and stuff like that, you explain. Oh, well, in that case, welcome to our dojo, the bird creature says. He reaches out a hand, or, well, a wing, sort of, and grabs you by your hand slash wing. You let him pull you up out of the bushes. Thanks, you say. Oh, what's your name, by the way? Me? My name's Phoenix. Or at least that's what everyone calls me. Because my specialty is raining fire from the sky using my bow and arrow. You know, just like the mythical Phoenix. You guys have a mythical Phoenix too? You say in wonder. What do you mean too? Phoenix responds. Oh, I just meant like as well as... Us, uh, bird creatures from the southern temple. Anyways, let's get on to training, you say, trying to change the subject as quickly as you can. Training it is. Come on, we still have target practice to do. You spend some time meditating for a little while, with a bow sitting on your lap. After meditation, you all get up and do a little bit of standing target practice. You stand about 30 feet away from the target. You grab an arrow from the bin. You put it in your bow. And you pull back on the strings with one of your wings. You aim perfectly and release the bow string. You find that the arrow travels exactly where you were imagining it traveling and hits dead center on the target. You grab another arrow, pull back once again, and release. This time, the arrow perfectly splits the other arrow in front of it, hitting in exactly the same spot. Wow, Phoenix says. You're really good. But can you do it while flying? Phoenix asks. You all fly up to the top of a tree holding your bow in one of your wings while you use it to fly. It's kind of an awkward thing using your wings to shoot a bow while also flying in the air. In this exercise, you have to fly from one end of the dojo to the other and hit every single target on the way. Watch me, Phoenix says. Phoenix jumps off of the tree, spreading her wings and begins floating from one side to the other. As she floats, she pulls her wings in, draws the bowstring and shoots one of the arrows. While she does it, she momentarily falls from the sky before spreading her wings again and pushing herself back up in the air. Again and again, she pulls back on her bow while sort of temporarily falling from the sky and releases the arrows. This seems to be how the bird dinosaur people have developed the ability to do archery well uh, their wings and hands are attached to each other. It's time for you to give it a shot. You stretch out your wings, 
and you gracefully jump off of the tree floating up in the air. As you see the first target, you pull your right wing towards your left to draw the bowstring. As you do, you immediately start falling out of the sky. You quickly draw back the bowstring, shoot the arrow, hitting the target dead center, and doing kind of a half roll before spreading your wings again. You repeat the process three more times, each time dropping out of the air, drawing the bowstring, and releasing a perfect shot before rolling back and spreading your wings once again. When you're done with archery practice, you begin to practice with the ninja stars. It works in much the same way. The birds swoop upwards, throw the ninja star while they're kind of suspended in the air for a second, and then spread their wings again and begin to float. It takes you a little longer to get the hang of this one, but eventually you do. Holding a few ninja stars in your hands, you jump off of the tree and spread your wings, grabbing the air around you. You flap a few times, and then you let yourself swoop down towards the target. When it's time to throw the ninja star, you swoop upward for a second, throwing yourself up into the air. Then, you pull back on your wings and throw the ninja star as hard as you can. You watch it fly through the air and hit the target dead center once again. After releasing, you immediately spread your arms back out to catch the air once again. Good job, Phoenix says. Now it's time for bow staff training. You all swoop down onto the ground, and you're handed a long cylindrical piece of wood, a wooden staff. You watch as the other ninja dinosaurs begin to spar each other, hitting their staves together, ducking, dodging, parrying, and you feel like you can do the same thing. You grab the staff with one of your hands facing down and the other facing up. It seems like Phoenix is going to be your opponent. You and Phoenix bow to each other, and then Phoenix raises their staff high in the air and begins running towards you, swinging the staff down above your head. You quickly throw your staff up in the air, blocking and pushing theirs out of the way. Then, you swing it around, trapping it on the ground, while your leg continues to spin and makes a perfect kick at Phoenix's chin. Wow, good move, Phoenix says. You and Phoenix battle for a little bit longer, but then you hear a loud knock on the door. Hey, let us in, the voice on the other side says. Not again, Phoenix says, slowly walking over to the gate. Let us in now, the voice says. Then you hear a loud banging, and the gate bursts open with wood breaking on either side. Standing in front of you is a, uh, well, a Tyrannosaurus Rex ninja person. I heard you had someone here from the Southern Temple, he says. I'm here to see if they're a match for me, says the large Tyrannosaurus Rex dinosaur creature standing in front of you. Well, did you have to break the door down? I was coming to let you in anyways, Phoenix says. I couldn't wait. Is that the person? The T-Rex says, looking at you. Yep, that's the person. Well, then I challenge you to a battle. A battle to the death. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not to the death, just like uh, to whoever wins. Uh, okay, you say, agreeing to do battle with this large Tyrannosaurus Rex. You step into the center of the dojo, and the T-Rex stands across from you. You both hold bow staves in your hand. You look at each other and bow politely. Then you hold your staff up in the air. Rex comes running at you, making the first move, 
swinging his staff as quickly and as powerfully as he possibly can. But you know that he's overcommitted. You quickly hit your staff to the side, spinning around, and then you do a little backflip up into the air, waving your arms to bring you higher and higher up. Hey, come down here, the Tyrannosaurus dinosaur says. You spread your wings out and dive straight down towards the Tyrannosaurus. Then, when you're just close enough, you pull all of your arms in, holding them tight to your body, and hold your staff directly out facing at the Tyrannosaurus. He sees you coming and winds up with his staff, ready to hit you out of the way. But just before you hit the ground, you spread your wings out once again, catching the air and rolling around to the left. As the Tyrannosaurus swings his bow, you slip around it to directly behind him. You sweep your staff along the ground, tripping the Tyrannosaurus Rex right onto his stomach. Then you swing your bow around, pointing it down right at his head. Okay, you win. You bird dinos are agile after all. But one day I want a remix or rematch or whatever it's called, he says as he gets up and begins to walk out of the dojo. Oh, and sorry about the door. I'll send somebody to fix it later. My fault. See you guys. The Tyrannosaurus waves goodbye while he walks out of the dojo. That guy's so strange, Phoenix says to you. Uh, yeah, he sure is. But anyways, I better get going, you say to the other dinosaurs. You place the bow staff back on the side of the dojo wall, and you jump up into the air, catching it with your wings and flying higher and higher up above the dinosaur city. You glide high above the city as you watch most of the dinosaur dojos below you while they transition to nighttime meditation and begin to prepare their minds for sleep. You swoop back down to the opening where the spaceship is, and it looks as if a door opens from nowhere since the spaceship's still invisible. You glide inside the ship and land on the ground, right in your living room. The door closes behind you, and you look down at your watch. You press the reset button and your body begins to feel all jelly-like once again. You slowly transform back to your human form, and you bend your fingers and your toes, and you squish around your face. You lay down on the couch in the center of the spaceship and pull a blanket over top of yourself. Your muscles are sore from all the training today, so you just lay back on your pillow and you close your heavy eyes. With each out-breath, you notice your body relaxing more and more, sinking down deeper and deeper into the couch. And every time your mind wanders away, you just notice where it goes, and with ninja-like precision, you bring it back to focusing on your breath. Slowly, your mind begins to drift to dreams of new things, and new adventures to come. Good night, everyone.